Hey, it is so great to be together again with you, Manor House family. And I sure hope that you've been able to enjoy a little bit of this sunshine this week, even in the midst of everything that's just going on all around us. And you know, today I want to have a conversation with you. And I want to talk about this idea about how do we embrace God's greater purpose for our lives. And, and if you're anything like me, that's been a real challenge in the previous uh, weeks and months as we've gone through all that we've gone through in the midst of all of the noise and the challenges and the pressures and disappointments and pains that we've been facing. It's like, how can we find the greater purposes of God for our life in the midst of everything that's going on? But here's one thing that I know for sure is that despite what's going on inside of us, and despite what's going on around us, that God has something more for us. And we have to just recognize this, that we were made for more. And here's the reality for each of us. And we have to grasp this today, is that God himself, he, he created each of us to do more things for him. And when I talk about more, I'm not necessarily talking about that God wants more for you, like more money or more things. But what God wants for you is more purpose and more destiny and more significance and fruitfulness. And so God put us on this earth with significance and value to do great things for him. And as we think about that, we see that God actually put you and me at this time in 2020 into this crazy world, believe it or not. He actually thought that you could do great things in the midst of all that's going on. So he places you in 2020 and he puts you in this beautiful, diverse family called Manor House. And then he places us in this broken, crazy world. And he says, I believe in you. I believe that you can actually be the change agent. You're the one that can actually bring hope and peace and joy to a world today that's crying out for that. And this is what God says to you and me in this hour, Manor House family, you and we were made for more. And I want to go to the Bible this morning and I want us to recognize that as we look at the word of God, that we, we see countless examples of how God uses natural objects in our world to be able to give analogies to define us and his purposes. And one of the most ancient and probably more popular examples that we see in scripture is the idea of an arrow. And when we think about that, we realize that, that this is something that we can look at, that we can hold like God wants to do with you. He wants to hold you. He wants us to have an intimate personal relationship with us. But there's also an added part for our lives that we have to recognize. And that is that there's a greater purpose for us, that God wants to also partner with us. And he wants to use us to be his hand and his feet and his voice to be able to partner with him in explaining God's unfolding story with a world that desperately needs him. And when we look at our lives and we think about that, God created every single one of us very unique. There's no one like you. You're not insignificant. You're not lesser than some other person. In fact, you're matchless. You're priceless in God's eyes. He chose you. He created you. He loves you. He makes you like no one else because there's a unique purpose for you that no one else can fulfill. I can't do it. No one can do it, but only you can do that. And so I want to look at this portion of scripture today that really illustrates this point. And as we go to the Bible, if you'd open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 49, verse two, and it's really talking about the nation of Judah and they had sinned and their, their world was falling apart and their nation was, was in shambles, a lot like what we're facing today. And they were on the verge of actually some consequences that God was gonna put on them because of just the disastrous situation, not only in the world, but what was going on in their hearts and what was going on in their nation. And so, but despite their mess, God comes along and he says, I'm going to give you a plan and I'm going to speak to you. And I want to give you a promise that specifically tells you how you can see your purpose in the midst of this crazy mess. And it says in Isaiah 49 verse two, and again, this is speaking of Jesus and ultimately the ministry of Jesus through us as church. So I want you to personalize this today as if God was speaking to you. And it says this, the Lord called me, you're called 
from the womb, from the body of my mother, it says, he named me and he made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand, he has concealed me. And I want you to catch this part. And he also has made me a select arrow. We've been just talking about this idea of arrow and he's hidden me in his quiver. I want to pray right now that God's going to touch your heart right now, wherever you're sitting at home, on a couch, on a bed, in a coffee shop, wherever you might be, that God's going to open up your heart to some revelation today. So Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we pray you would open up our heart. You would illuminate to us, God, the greater purposes of God for us in our lives. And God, let us not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, years ago, I heard this uh, amazing story about a man named Edgar. He was a homeless man, and he lived in a very poor neighborhood in New York City. And he ended up building his house, if you will, in a condemned basement of this condemned building. There was no water, there was no electricity, and there was no heat. And he would go out every day scrummaging through and looking for cans and looking for bottles to get enough money to be able to feed himself. And unfortunately, one bitterly cold day, Edgar would freeze to death and die. And so local authorities, when they found his body, would begin to rummage through all of his stuff. And they would find the names of some of his uh, next of kin living over in New Jersey and would ask them to come over and to get some of his stuff that were, was in this particular place. And so his relatives would walk into this dilapidated little shack area of this condemned building and they would begin to pick up his belongings and they found this unusual rock that was holding up one of the doors. And it was so unusual that they took it to a geologist friend and the geologist friend looked at it and with astonishment said to them, this is one of the largest uncut diamonds I have ever seen in my life. Ultimately, it turned out to be worth $12 million. And you just stop and you think about that. You go, wow, that's an amazing story. But if you really think about it, it's a tragic story. Why? Is because Edgar had everything that he needed within his possession to change his situation, but he just couldn't see the value. And when I stop and I think about so many people today, especially in this crazy world, we lose sight of the significance and the purpose that we have within our reach. The Bible tells us that Christ is in us. He's the hope of glory. It says that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And there's this significant thing that God has for you and for me, and he wants us to not lose it or miss it, especially in these crazy, crazy times, because God needs you to be his voice, to be his hand. He needs you to be his arrow, to shoot the word of God of peace and joy to a world that's just in so desperate need of it. But I just wanna share with you just these three thoughts. And I think it's so important when we just grasp what God's trying to communicate to us, that we see that we have a part to play in God's unfolding story. And the first thing that you and I have to do as we begin to unpack this idea is we have to realize that we were created with potential for more. And I want to use an analogy today, and I have a stick here, and this, this stick is simply a stick. But when you look at it, you have to recognize that there's more potential in this stick than the stick itself. It could be used for a variety of things. And unfortunately, what happens is we simply look at our lives oftentimes as something that's insignificant or average. So it has to start, first of all, with our mind and our heart and our spirit. And we have to grab a hold of the fact, regardless of whatever's happened in your world or life, with this idea that I was created potentially for more. And I want to go back to our scripture, Isaiah 49, 2, the first part of this particular verse. It says that the Lord called me from the womb. And it says, from the body of my mother, he named me. And the word uses these two unique Hebrew words. And I want you to catch this today. When you look at this word called, where it says he called me, that word called in the Hebrew means to come into 
one's presence, speaking of God, to come into one's presence and to be given a divine or a God-ordained task. And so this is what God's saying is that you've come into my kingdom. You've come into a relationship with me. I called you because I have a God-ordained task for you. It's exactly what that word means is that he called you. And the second part of it, this word named in the Hebrew means to publicly proclaim, not privately, but publicly proclaim one's individual worth and matchless value. And I just get really excited about that verse because this is what God is saying to you and to the world around you is that you're chosen, that you're significant, that you have matchless value and I've got a destiny and a purpose for you to do great things for me. And as you, as you look at other scriptures in the Bible, they come back to confirm this. And I see this in Ephesians chapter one, verses four through five. And this is Paul, he's speaking uh, to the Ephesians church. He says this, even before he made the world, it says God loved us and he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. And that's because of what Christ has done in us. It says God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. I love that because this is what, let's just stop the noise, the social media, the pressures, the tensions, the news, and let's hone in on what God is saying to you. He's saying things like this. I loved you. I chose you. I've adopted you. I'm bringing you to me. Those are some of the most promising words in this time that we could ever embrace and need to hear. We even see David say this in Psalm 139, verses 16 through 18. And I want to read this from the Passion Translation. And this is again God speaking to you. He says, you saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days that you planned for me, they were already recorded in your book. Every single moment that you're thinking of me, how precious and how wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought, that every moment of every day, even when you're not thinking about him, he's thinking about you. And he's guiding your steps and he's wanting to direct you and help you to stay on track with this idea that you're significant and he wants to do great things in your life right now and right now and right now and right now. Every thought he's thinking about, every moment, he's wanting you to see that there's destiny and purpose for your life. And I just love that scripture. And it's something that we just have to understand. It's got to start here that we have the potential to do great things for God, that we were potentially made for more. You know, so many of you would know that uh, my wife and I, we, um, we have two special need boys and um, love them with all of my heart. And at a very young age, we recognized that Kyle could run really fast, especially um, when he was in trouble and trying to hide, but that Kyle can run really fast. And so we thought we would put him into Special Olympics and he ended up winning a lot of medals. Every summer he would break records and win a lot of races. And this one particular summer, he went to the state finals down at Hayward Field in Eugene, Oregon. Let's go Eugene campus. The the, the, the stands are packed with thousands of people. He had won the 100 meter dash. He had already had a gold medal. Four by 100 meter relay had a gold medal. It came to the last race of the day, which was a 400 meter run. There were seven others. There were eight of them total and they took off and Kyle began running and all of them were running with him and they went into the first turn and they were all together as they went into the second turn. He was a few feet ahead and as they're going down the back straight, he began to get further and further apart and as he got to the third turn, he was probably 40 feet ahead of all the other people and as he went into the fourth turn, there were people just coming into the third turn and it just looks like he's gonna win this thing and so he just starts sprinting down the back stretch right to the finish line and he's stops at the finish line and he stops and he starts waving at the stands and he's waving at everybody and everybody's cheering. I mean, there's thousands of people that are in the stands and he's just waving at them. I'm going, Kyle, 
looking over the line, you gotta go. And he's just, he's just waving at me and he's looking at the people running. He's just waving and the crowd is just going ballistic. And just before the, the next runner gets right next to him, he just jumps over the finish line. He looks at the crowd and he picks up his fingers and he just goes, yeah. And, and I just remember that story as it was yesterday. And you know, as you think about Kyle, and I think if the world looks at Kyle, they would say a couple of things about Kyle. Kyle has special needs. Kyle has limitations. And you know what? You're exactly right. But you know what also Kyle has? He has God. And he also has a dad that has spoken into his life every night when I would put him to bed, I would look into his eyes and say, you're my hero. You're gonna do great things. And I used to tell stories, superhero stories that he was the hero in the story. And he goes, dad, is that me? And I'd say, that's you. And, and, and I tell that story to help you understand that despite you having limitations, making mistakes, challenges in your life, that God still looks at you he says, you're my hero. You're going to do great things for God. You've made mistakes, but I love you anyways. You're facing the most difficult challenge of your life, but I'm here to tell you, I love you anyways. And there's purpose and destiny for your life. So we have to start there. We have to start with this place saying, okay, God, you created me to do significant things despite what anybody says about my age, about my gender, or about my race. I think that's so important as man house family. Even as we're facing all of the racial tensions, I speak to every person in our church, and you need to hear me loud and clear. White, brown, black, yellow, male, female, it doesn't matter. Paul talks about this in Galatians. We are all equal. We have value. We have honor. We are one. Come on, we're man house. I believe that God's going to do great things for us. But here's the kicker about this story. It just doesn't end with potential. Yes, we have to start with this idea of belief, but we also need to move to this next idea. And it's this, is that we were created not just for potential for more, but we are continually being prepared for more. And so God brings you into this world and we may be like a stick and God loves you just the way you are. But the reality is he loves you too much to stay that way. So he allows you to start this journey. It's called sanctification where he begins to put you into his story and he allows you to be a part of being a work in progress. And he gets you to do some of the things you don't want to do in order to become what you're supposed to become. And I have here a whittled stick and this kind of represents our life. As we give our life to Jesus and as we come into the church, he knows and you know that there's things that need to be worked out in your life. And in Isaiah 49 too, it says this, it says, and he also made me a select arrow. And this is prophetic in sense because that word select actually means this, specifically chosen due to the polished finish to the point where you are reliable to the archer to be used. And so what gets you between I'm a stick and I just gave my life to Jesus and I'm supposed to be doing great things in him. He says, I love you so much. We got some work to do. And so what begins to happen is that he puts you into circumstances. He puts you into a place of conflict because he wants to work in your life pride. And so he goes, let's take care of that piece off your life. And hey, let's have a little marriage challenge because you got to learn humility and patience. And let's go ahead and let's open up the word. And God begins to speak to you and you pray and you come to worship. And like even what's going on now, to be honest, with all of the racial tensions, maybe he's trying to get you to understand what it means to be empathetic. Maybe what you need to be is a better listener. Maybe what you need to do is to have forgiveness. And he puts us in these situations. And what happens is we can get so myopic. We can get so lost in the stuff that this part becomes extremely painful because we lost sight of what he's creating us to be. And we just get caught up in the fact that there's these painful things that are happening to us. But God is at work in your life. And God is working to whittle us away to become the perfect arrow that he wants us to be. And that's really such a huge part of being a part of Manor House. Listen, we aren't interested in people just spectating. 
Because God, and it's not because we're bothered by it. It's because God, we know God has a purpose for your life. And we know that God has brought you into our family, a church for the journey, that you play a divine part in God's story. And so we're gonna encourage you and we're gonna love you and we're gonna challenge you and we're gonna pray for you. And hopefully we can help you on this thing called the discipleship process where you begin to work out all that needs to be worked out in your life. And so we do a lot of things in order to help you in that journey. And one of the things that we do is we have a Bible college, Portland Bible College. And it's actually been a ministry of Manor House for 52 years And we've trained people inside of our church, actually over 5,000 leaders in 60 nations outside of our church to help them understand that God is working us to be able to find our bullseye. And really, Portland Bible College is is a lot more than just a college. And oftentimes we think, okay, that's a college for young people. Really what we see in Portland Bible College is it's a ministry of our church. It's, It's our discipleship engine. It's our equipping engine that can help people young to old to be able to work through all of the areas and learn about the word of God and work harder to become all that God's created them to become. And so I want to encourage you with a couple things that we're doing, especially in this time of COVID, um, as we still have some weeks ahead of us, we wanted to put into your hands from Portland Bible College, some amazing whittling opportunities. And we wanted to give them to you just to be able to help you to become more like the arrow that God desires you to be. And so here's a couple things I want you to consider. Just lean in and think about these for your life. The first thing that we're we're doing is what's called PBC discussions. These are free, but we've put together five sessions on worldview and five sessions on basic doctrine. And what we want you to do is just to immerse yourself in the word of God that will really, really help to anchor you, especially in these uncertain times. And so maybe you should consider doing this maybe for a a personal Bible study, or maybe possibly you could be thinking about this idea of doing it with your family or your spouse. Turn off Netflix. You've probably already watched everything anyways, but turn on PBC and spend some time being enriched in the word. Maybe you're a small group leader. Maybe even think about saying, hey, for the next 10 weeks, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to one of these sessions and then we're going to unpack it together to just talk about what God is speaking to us. And so this is a great opportunity once again again, to allow God to speak into your life. There's something else that's right around the corner. It's going to launch on July 7th, and it's called Prime. And this is really an opportunity for you to to encourage your young person, or if you're young, to get engaged in a comprehensive six-week discipleship program. And you're going to learn about worldviews. You're going to learn about spiritual disciplines and doctrine. And we're going to try to help you figure out how do you remain stable, biblically focused during times where everything seems so cloudy and foggy. And I just want to encourage you, listen, if you're a young person, If you have a young person, if there was ever a time to get engaged and understand what God is saying to us in this season, Prime would be a perfect example for you and a perfect opportunity for you. And lastly would be this, and this is something that we're just launching that I'm really excited about. And it's basically a Manor House Certificate of Ministry program. And this is an opportunity for you if you want a more robust educational experience for you to dive in and to spend some time learning all the different biblical principles and values for your life. And uh, whether you have a burden to be in full-time ministry or plan a church or whether you're going to just stay on a career track in the marketplace, but you want a very significant foundational biblical base in your life, I want you to encourage, I want to encourage you to take that. I think it's just ideal for so many people to be able to put that into their life. And so can I just encourage you as we talk about this whole idea about being prepared for more, recognize that we play a part in that preparation. God's done his part. And he said, listen, there's potential in you. 
We've got to do our part. and We've got to put in spiritual disciplines, allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life, but we've got to do some things. And ultimately, it brings us to this final point, and I'm done, is that we can then ultimately fulfill what we were made for. See, when God looks at you, he sees the end in mind. I'm so thankful for his word in Philippians where it says this, he who began a good work in you, it says he's faithful to complete it. You are created for a purpose. You're not an accident. You're not significant. As you look at all the brokenness around you, you look at the relationships that are next to you. You look at the neighbor that's struggling. You look at the protests and the things that are going on. You see law enforcement people that are hurting, whatever that looks like for you, God placed you right where he placed you so that you could be shot right into the midst of those situations and bring peace and bring joy and bring love and bring forgiveness. Maybe pray for someone, maybe cry with someone. Whatever it is, God created you for more. And you know, it was once said this, that there's three things that are certain about a man that we need to understand of why we were born. And it's number one is that number one, we need to understand the day we were born. Second, we need to understand why we were born again. And we need to understand why we, what we were made for. And if we can just grab a hold of those things, that idea of the day we were born, the day we were born again, and the reason why we were born, I think it will help us to understand that God has something great for you and for me. You know, in closing, I'm, I'm encouraged by this statement that's made in Psalm 25, 12. It's the message paraphrase, and it's made by David. David asked this question of God, and again, as he's probably writing in his journal or private time, he says, my question, he says, what are God worshipers like? As if he's asking God. And he says, your response? He says, their arrows aimed at God's bullseye. So despite what you're facing, whether you're just beginning a journey to understand, okay, God, who are you? What are you like? Are you even real? Or maybe you've been a believer for 60 years. This is what God says. I've got a destination in mind for you. I want to use you to do great things. And as I think about our church, I think about our family, we are filled with thousands of arrows that have an opportunity. Listen, this is our divine opportunity. This is our moment. It is our hour to shine, to bring peace and love and grace to a world that so desperately, desperately needs it. So I want you to do this right now. Would you bow your head and would you close your eyes? And I just want you to even place your hands on your heart, no matter where you're at. And I want to pray this over every person that's listening to my voice today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for creating us. Lord, today we stop and we proclaim that we're unique and that we're special, that we're chosen, that we're adopted. Lord, that you allowed us to be a part of your unfailing plan, your unfolding story. And Lord, we just want to say that sometimes it really hurts to be shaped or molded or whittled. But Lord, would you have our way in our lives? God, would you help us with those areas that we struggle in? Lord, maybe some areas where we're stuck in offense, a hurt, bitterness, anger, doubt, depression, hopelessness, fear, anxiety. Lord, even right now, God, as we pray, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you change and transform and whittle? And Lord, most importantly, God, for every person that hears my voice today, God, would you show them, God, that you have a unique purpose for their life and you want to do great things in them and through them. And Lord, we're trusting you in the days to come. Lord, that you will shoot us out, God, into our city, into our nation, into neighborhoods, into hurting and broken places. And God, you would help us to hit the bullseye, Father, for our life 
and in that moment. And Lord, one last thing before we close. Lord, I just pray for any person that hears my voice, that's listening to me right now, that doesn't know you, or Lord, maybe they feel far from you. God, I pray that you would draw them to you. God, you would help them to open up their heart, to acknowledge you as their Lord and Savior. And you would come and you would live inside of them, forgive them of all their sins and help them to follow you and to become all that you created them to be. And so Lord Jesus, we ask these things, believing that the best is yet to come for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Love you so much. Have a blessed week. How amazing that we are not only made with a purpose, but we are made for more. Yeah, and next week we're starting a new series and it's gonna be a fantastic July as we get to hear from some friends of Mana House, Greg Surratt, Wendy Perez, Tracy Armstrong, and Havla Cunnington. It's gonna be an amazing series. We'll see you next week. See ya.